Welcome to Oz NZ Combined Racing Leagues Bathurst Top 10 Shootout for this weekend's Bathurst 1000. I'm your host, Neil Haynes, and we have got a sensational looking Top 10 Shootout. We have got Gunner 180 who took pole position with a 201.6 second lap and Sato 15 in the Monster Energy Racing with a 202.2 second lap. Uh, time around Mount Panorama with Ashley Coochie in the Coke Racing Car in third position. And John Slow, who was so entertaining around the circuit, drifting sideways, pulling the handbrake and having the crowd cheering with a 203.184 in fourth position. And Rusty qualified in fifth position in the Milwaukee Racing Car. And he's out for the uh, top 10 shooter out as well. And uh, we got Zach 18 in the Black Bull Racing, in, who qualified in six with a 203.586 second lap. And Timmy 82 in the Mobile One Appliances. Captain Awesome in the Red Bull Ampole Racing was in eighth. And we had G Dude that got him in um, the Shell V Power in ninth. But Slide Science is going to take control of that car for the top 10 shootout. And Loza is in the Autobahn Racing in 10th. So as the top 10 shootout goes, we've got the slowest car that goes out first. So Loz will be the first one out on track. So here we go. So we should be able to get a few things happening very shortly for this qualifying. Just bear with me while I get the cameras sorted. So here we will go. We'll bring it into the stream now as we should see ourselves now with Loza. Coming out of pit lane. So if you're tuning in, guys, let us know who you're going to support for this top 10 shootout. Who's going to take out this shootout? We have got Loza out now on his warm-up lap. Oh, it is warm up. So we've got the Go Black Bull team for the Zackies. Kapow, definitely. So they're going to be the fifth car out on track. Uh, after this, we'll have the Shell V-Power car of Slide Science that will come out to do a lap. You can see there, 4 p.m. with a heavy cloud. The track is dry, medium rubber. So the track is fast. And Lockie Five Fives, welcome, my friend. He's the man that took out the uh, Bathurst 500 last year here on AMS2 alongside his teammate Sato 15. Good to see you tuning in. And also Highlanders cheering his teammate itself um, to uh, take out pole position. Net code wants Timmy. Oh, Timmy82, he's going to be really trying to get what he can. He's going to be fourth out on track as uh, they qualified seventh fastest. But here we go. We've got Loza just starting to get things warmed up now. Things are going to be very, very hectic. So he's going to have a few nerves. It's going to be the first drive to set down a time. He was able to do a 204.671 during qualifying. So welcome everyone here for the ANZ CRL Bathurst Top 10 Shootout for 2023 on Automobilista 2. Sit back, relax, and enjoy these the fastest Oz guy, Oz and New Zealand guys out on AMS2. Fight for glory here. And to try and get away on the pointy end of the grid tomorrow morning. So here we go. Now or never for Loza in the Autobahn car. Teaming up with uh, Stu. So Stu will be anticipating to see if he can glow up, the, get up the order a little bit. entry and uh, respecting that outside curb, not getting over the uh, top of the rise, which is good. That sometimes can bottom out the car and get a bit sideways. Headlights are blazing, coming up Mountain Straight into Griffin's Bend, turn two here at Bathurst. 
me know if everything's okay. Guys, if you've seen any problems with the stream, please let me know and I'll see if I can sort it out. But I think everything should be okay. Going up through the cutting, he goes. So uh, we'll see what sort of sector time he's got. It's going to be hard to gauge what sort of time based on the, uh, the outlap. So... Thanks, McFry. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks for letting us know, guys, Zachy and uh, Lockie. He's done a 52.5, so that's not too bad. I think for most sectors, you want to see around a 50 second first sector, so he's just a little bit out, playing it cautious. Slide sides, he's out on his warm up lap, on his out lap to get things all up to temperature as we're looking at Mozza getting through Forest Elbow. No lock up there. Looking good, take it, keeping it off the wall. And he's down Conrod now as we ride on top of the roof down. It's all about power, horsepower of these V8 supercars. Up over the uh, hump he goes. He's trying to conquer that mountain, that's for sure. Loza and Stu, they'll be doing their best tomorrow. End of the chase, looks good at this stage. No pitch to the brake, can he get it into the apex, get it turned in? It's looking good, it's looking like it's very safe lap, you would say. What's he gonna, what's the time's gonna bring us up here? Is it gonna be a 2.03? Oh, it's a 2.06.7, so that's just not quite ripped up here on the track early on. This is why they were fighting so hard during the qualifying session to uh, get into the uh, into the uh, top top five or so to let these first few cars lay some rubber down. As slide sides now coming in hard as he's about to start his lap. We're going to have no rest for the wicked. But a 2.67 is still a pretty respectable time there in the top 10 with all that pressure. And as, uh, yeah, definitely Highlander was a safe lap and well done to Loza. And thanks again to Lockie. Charles supporting some of these drivers. He knows how tough it is to win one of these races. And here we go, so slide sides. Off he goes out of turn one. Had to correct it a little bit, but that wouldn't affect him. Get that power on. through Griffith, held in a nice line, drifting it up perfect. That looks a very tidy part of the lap there. Okay, so the tyres need that extra lap to grip up. Yeah, true, mate. Probably to get up to temperature, they'll have to work it hard on their outlet, that's for sure, to try and get those tyres where they want to be, but that's the art of a top 10 shootout. And here he comes, slide size over, deep through Reed Park and up over McPhillamy. The crowd is cheering, wanting to see the shelf be power car. Up, higher up the grid if he can be. Looking nice down the mountain here, over Skyline. Down the dipper, fly, flames billowing out of the exhaust. Probably the best time of the weekend, a top 10 shootout. Go slide. Oh, he's taken every little inch of that of the um, track then, just missing the end of the concrete barrier. He's pushing it here at the moment. He had a 51.4 first sector, a 32.1 the second sector. So you want to, guys want to be aiming for those 31s in the second sector. So he's still a little bit down, but he could be up here. I'm, I'm predicting probably a 204. A high 204, maybe a low, low 205, we'll see. Oh, just a pinch of the rear brake, it looked like as he went to turn it, but it's still gripped up. What's he got? A 204.3. Great lap by Slide Side, so he's set a, bet, set a benchmark already. Um, so it'll be this man here, Captain Awesome in the Red Bull Air Pole. Cars, see what he can do. They did a uh, 204.323 in qualifying. So you can just see that lap from slide side to 204.362 is slightly off Captain Orson's best time that he did. So that was a solid lap, Letco, definitely from slide side. So it was an awesome lap with all that pressure. 2.3 seconds faster than Loza. 
and he's really got the pressure now on Captain Awesome. So we may see slide signs up a few spaces here. We don't know. Captain Awesome is a very handy one lap pace man. And I'm sure we're going to see the best of him here right now. Now as he comes on down now, look at him. He's looking at that brake mark around that 100 metres to get himself organised. He wants to get a good exit here, just on that curve. And look at that afternoon sun's just starting to come on through as he comes down the start, finish straight. And into turn one. Looks tidy there, a little bit of opposite lock to get that power on up mountain straight. And up he goes. Captain Awesome, can he bring out the awesomeness for us here to this afternoon? Don't these liveries look absolutely outstanding here that you can get on race department for the Super V8 um, livery pack? Replacement pack. Drifted it up over the wall. Over he goes under the BP bridge. The Burt's Corner, I like to call it. And all how why he got so close there to that fence to the great and here he goes now that's where the track just drops away and they really now just managing this one single lane trying to not get too far out of the racing line so what's he had he had 51.5 his first sector which is pretty good lap time for the first sector Oh, I thought he was going to hit the wall there. He's kept it off at a 32.598. So he's on the money here to try and challenge slide science. Up over the hump they go. Full throttle. Almost no time to blink here because before you know it, you're on the anchors as hard as you can. Modulate that brake on the turning so you can get it turned in. And that looks beautiful through the chase from Captain Awesome. Over the High Tech Oils Bridge. One more corner to do to negotiate here at Murray's. Can he get it done, get it pointed in? Up over the curb, looks like it's a good lap. Is it gonna be fast enough? No, it isn't. It's a 205.8. So he's lost out a little bit there in that uh, second sector. Oh, he was a little bit slow actually through the top of the uh, first sector as well. So uh, let's bring on the Mobile One Appliances car of Timmy82. Wonder if he's dyed his, cut, his hair any different colour than blue or pink. We don't know. He's got the helmet on. And uh, we may have to try and get a uh, after race interview with him at one stage just to see if he's uh, got those uh, coloured curly locks of his. And here he goes. Now they've got that little bit of that, sometimes that lumpy feel in your throat as you know it's now's the time to shine. He's on the power. He'll be hoping he's got his tyres up to pressure so he can get the most out of them. The pandy times early up in the up the uh, packs. The slide science has been able to gain one spot already. Fastest man out there. So we had some support for Timmy82 early. So let's start shouting for Timmy boys. If you are all watching, boys and gals, let us know. It's probably one of the uh, uh, great look and livery car here of the appliances online from a couple of years ago when it was the, in the Holden livery. And it's all about commitment now as it goes over under the Burt's Bridge banner and now here he goes so he goes over he gets as far over to that grade as he can turns it in that car bouncing around as he's trying to get out every inch of pace out of this car gave a little bit of room coming out of McPhillamy there the approach to the skyline looking very tidy so the chase I mean the uh, dip has been kind to all our runners so far Run down the straight we go for Timmy. 
These cars sound so nice as well. Up into the sixth gear, I'd say. Top gear, topping it out to around about 291, 292. They might get a little bit more in uh, this top 10 shootout trim of the car. Low fuel tanks. Yeah, the 51.5 first sector, 32.3. This is a bit similar to what we saw from Captain Awesome. So maybe Slide Science may make two positions up here. I don't know if Timmy's done enough. No, he hasn't. So he's put himself up into second place at this stage. So that was a nice steady lap from Timmy. So that puts him now no worse than seventh position on the grid. No, eighth position, I should say. As we now pick up Zach 18 as he's uh, coming down on Rod straight in the Red Bull. We caught the Black Bull car. And welcome Zachy 3. He's cheering for his brother. And I think that these two um, larrikins, we've got the older statesman taking control of the car. And uh, we love the Zachy boys. They do a tremendous job here at ANZ CRL. 100% commitment at all time and let's go. Let's hear we, Zaki's just getting those little bit of brake temperature in. Right in the brake by the looks of it and here he goes. Off he goes, he lets it go, lets it loose. And maybe that was a little bit too loose to be honest. See, was that a little wiggle? Here he goes on the uh, road up the mountain straight he goes. Let's have a look to see his view as he goes up these Big clouds over the top of the mountain that seems to uh, build up over the afternoon, but there's no threatening rain at all. It's all dry. And look at him go here into Griffin's Fan. That sun's just starting to glare down. He's just got to try and get it right here now into the cutting. Almost left a black muck all the way down Bert's corner. Bert wouldn't have been happy if he'd seen all the dirty marks down his wall. Oh, he's been a little bit uh, cautious through Reed Park there. I'd say by Zach 18. What's he got for the first sector? It's a 51.3. So they're all roughly the 51.3s at the moment. Highlanders predicting a 203 for um, Zaki. So what's he got? A 31.9 on exit of, se of sector two. So that's almost there. That's getting there for him. Still, I think it's a little bit slow, to be honest, with the 31.9. We know Zaki three's done a 31.8. I think it's, it's been his best sector two. So. Zach 18 needs to have that pace. Oh, kicking up the dirt at the chase. He's taken a lot of that curb. He's on a fly. He, this third sector looks like it's going to be an absolutely blitzer of his time. Will he get it up above Slide? No, he can't. He's put it in second. So Slide Science is still on pole position. So from ninth position, he's so far in pole. Uh, but a nice lap by Zach 18 because we know the pressure's there by everyone. That last sector was a 41.5. Uh, we see a lot of the faster diet guys in the 40s, but to be fair, I don't think the, the track is as grippy as what the guys have had in qualifying. Well, uh, we may see uh, Rusty find a little bit of extra grip now. Uh, Lockie Slide is sliding on up. He sure is. And uh, Bo Kane, he's cheering on Rusty now. So here we go. His teammates sitting there in the Milwaukee garage. Trying to keep the uh, hospitality uh, people all, all uh, refreshed, you could say. Bo Kane is. So he's uh, sending out a few good vibes to the Milwaukee crew. And we've got McFry boy. Welcome, McFry boy. He's going for Rusty as well. So he's a lot of support here for Rusty. He's been fast all weekend too. So we can see him 
looking to put in a good first sector up over the top of the mountain here on this climb. The boys are getting that power out of the cutting really well. The cars are looking good. Respecting Bert's corner. And here he goes. What's he got for us? A 51.2. I think that may be our fastest time through sector one during this session. had the paint just rippling off the outside of that curve of uh, Skyline. Oh, a bit of a pinch of the brake. The first of a pinch brake we've seen and he's kept it off the wall. He was travelling towards the wall, but he's got a 31.7 in the second sector. So things are looking good for Rusty. He may be the man to topple slide signs off pole position. Oh, I just got a chill up my spine as the car came through there, the fastest corner of Australia into the chase on entry. And out he goes now. Car's looking very stable. Twenty one, twenty three red, is it? Here we go. Will we see him on top? Yes, we can. Half a second faster than Slide Science and the first driver into the 203. So someone predicted a 203. So well done to Rusty. Now, here we go. This one here is Mr. Excitement. If you didn't see his qualifying lap, guys, wait till you see the top 10 shootout lap. He had the crowd in all types of uh, cheering. He had it sideways, he was pulling the handbrake. The only thing he wasn't doing was throwing lollies out of the car. So what's he got for us today? What sort of uh, things has John Slow got us in the truck assist car? Teaming up with the unicorn. And he starts his lap, so he hasn't got too much to go. Now, I should say, we don't have many more to go now as we go on through this order. We're going through fairly fast. After John, we've got the top three. We've got Ashley Cucci next and Sato 15 and then Gun 180. Been fastest all weekend along with his teammate Longy. But it's all about John Slow at the moment. He's keeping it side. I mean, not keeping it side. He's keeping it straight compared to sideways that we saw in qualifying at this stage. Look at the flames coming out of the truck assist car. I think this first sector is going to be fairly competitive. I think we may see a 30. We, I mean, a 50, I should say. It was a 50.5. So the first driver to be in the 50s. Oh, and a, just a brush on the, the wall. That won't hurt him. That'll keep him going. That'll wag him on here. Taking a lot of curve on entry, coming into the dipper. So this is looking good for John Slow at the moment. Gets it turned in on a beautiful exit of uh, the Forest Elbow with a 31.6. So he's on par in the second sector for most of these drivers. I think Rusty was the same, but his first sector was absolutely very, very fast. It was blistering pace from John Slow. Here, 203.1, nearly nudging into the 202s. What a great time from John Slow. He'll be happy with that. As we've seen, John Slow put in the 203.8 previously. So he's uh, bettered his time by points. Uh, seven of a second from his qualifying time, so he's definitely happy with that. Maybe this track is gripping up, so we've got Ashley Kuchi in the Coca Cola car. Uh, slow by name, not by nature. That's exactly right for John Slow. But let's have a look at Ash Ashley in the Coca Cola car. And 
and uh, Ashley's teaming up with uh, Wadey. So Wadey will be looking forward to seeing his teammates, see where he can get. Slide signs currently in third position. There's uh, three more drivers to go, so he could be knocked down to seventh. So that's a good, uh, that, that was a great lap by Slide Science. Same as Rusty. Rusty had a great lap as well. So, oh, a bit of an inside curve. Brush on the wall by Ashley. Very pointy. It's turning in another 50.7. So, another driver in the 50s in the first sector. Up over the top he goes. Have a look at it. He go over the skyline here. It just drops away. You can't see the track. Now you can see it. You've got to pick your points. You're entering into the dipper here. Don't get drifting too wide. Oh, these drives are so professional. Look at him go. He's, he's doing it without a sweat by the looks of it as he comes over into the forest elbow. And a nice exit of 31.3, I think it is, without my glasses, but it's uh, looking good. It's looking good for him to be in front of Rusty, but is he going to be better, good enough to be in front of John Slope? We don't know, but it's only a matter of time now. He's got three corners to go, the entry here, and then into the chase. Got to get out of this nice, get that little turn in, and then get Cliff Murray's right. See how much break he can take into this corner. He's gone pretty deep. He's gone after the 100 metre ball there. He's thrown it in, it's stuck. It's gripped up. Will it be fast enough? Yes, it is. It's half a second faster than John Slow. So, Ashley, what a great lap there. And Wadey will be absolutely cheering at the moment, seeing his car there on provisional pole. But we've got two more men to go. We've got Sato 15. That was a great lap. So, these times are absolutely tumbling as we look in as these drivers are just... I've, I'm almost speechless watching what these drivers are doing. We had Sato with a, a fastest lap. It's a race pace of 202.809 last year. Teaming up with Lockie Five Fives. And it's going to see, they were in the Preston Hire car last year. The Preston Hire car not actually on the grid this time as uh, Lockie Five Fives hasn't been able to uh, make the, uh, the date. But I tell you what, this Saturday 15 can pull out anything. Just to make you uh, aware, the 202.8 is actually race pace, not qualifying pace. So it's still a time of a 202.5 by Ashley. was awesome. But Sato, can he get, if any man can, this man can. He loves, he laps up the pressure. A lot of the ANZ CRL blokes know what Sato can pull out of his uh, out of his back pocket here, and he, that's what he's got to do. He's taken all the track there on entry, up over the curb, kept that power on nice. Let's see what his first sector is going to be once he gets up after Bert's corner. This is looking good. That's where Ashley just touched the inside of the wall of the cutting. No such problems for Sato. This is, this is 100% commitment of 50.6. Though he's there or thereabouts with all the fast guys so far. But this top part of the mountain is where we've seen him shine. I'd say a low 30 probably in sector two is what we're looking at. Just kept it off the wall there, but it was a 31.4. So, oh, I think he's lost a bit of time over the top. And when he went through the, the forest elbow there, he was fighting that car. Bit of marble starting to build up on the, out, out the uh, racing line here. That's not going to affect these guys because they know how to hit the racing line, lap after lap. That's why they're so good at it. But here we go, final corner for Sato. It's going to be touch or go. Will he be able to get on top here? Provisional pole? No, he can't. Not quite fast enough, a 202.9. He may be a little bit disappointed with that. He's done a 202.2 .2 in qualifying, but that... 
was still a good lap from Saturday. He's kept it clean and they're going to have a good fast race car for tomorrow. Now, anyone that's been keeping up to date here on our website with uh, the event, they know that this man, Gun 180, he's been so fast all weekend. And his teammate Longy is just as fast. And these are the race favourites. What are we going to see here? This is the last car out on track for the top 10 shootout. Hope you've enjoyed the shootout, guys. I've enjoyed it so much bringing it to you guys. Will we see some magic from Gunner? He has done a 201.606 in qualifying. Will we see him absolutely blitz his field? All reports from the drivers are just saying that the track grip is not quite there to what they had in qualifying. So will we see him still get into the 201s? Or will we try and push too hard and then end up costing himself a bit of time? We won't know as he goes over that hump up into turn two here in Griffin's Bend. What a great cert corner this is. It goes around, rips up, drops off camber here. And you've got to keep on to the power. You've got to have confidence in the car that it's going to not uh, spin around on you. But open up the steering a little bit so it doesn't over rotate. Here he goes, he gets that power on. Very important, the car squats and gets the power on out of the cutting. Third's corner has been treating him nice. He always oh, respected a lot of Third's corner actually, but a 30.4 first set, I mean a 50.4 first sector. That's the fastest we've seen. 202.1 the prediction by uh, Lockie 55. He could be right here, but that was sensational. Oh, I think he fought that car after he hit that curb. Oh, look at him just being able to get it out wide, get that power and get a good power exit out of the forest elbow for the final time. He's got a 31.540, so this is going to be a tough time. He's actually weaving a little bit down the straight, trying to get a little bit of temperature. I reckon he's going to go in as deep as anyone's gone deep here into the chase. Let's have a look. Past the 150 almost, and he's on hard on the brakes. Gets it turned in. Little dab of the curb. On the outside, here he goes. There's nothing in this time between him and Ashley. There was nothing in it. It was Ashley Cucci in the Coke Commodore that takes out the top 10 shootout. Gunner in second position. But it's this man here in the Coke car. Let's see if we can do a track around because this man deserves all the accolades. What a lap by this man. Ashley Cucci in the Coke Commodore. Congratulations to him. What an absolutely sensational lap we saw from him. And they'll be very happy there at the Coca-Cola Racing Team. But let's not uh, let's not uh, take it away from the other guys here. Gunner 180, he did an absolutely standard, outstanding job. 0.012 of a second. He got beaten for pole position. But he's going to start along on the front row alongside Ashley and uh, the Coke car. So the Penrite and the Coke car will be... Uh, on the front row. What a great effort that was. And uh, while we're having a look at it, Ashley Cucci, I'll just see if we can try and pick up anything here for get Ashley into the uh, commentary at all. So just bear with me, guys. And Ashley, I think I may have you made in uh, comms, mate, to uh, congratulate you on that top 10 shootout pole position. How do you feel, mate? Yeah, mate, I wasn't expecting that, mate. I was at least uh, aiming for third. But, um, yeah, when uh, Gunn lost it out of the cutting there, it, uh, coming onto the Conrad, it, uh, yeah, it sort of threw me. It threw me, that's for sure. Yeah, it was a sensational lap, though. You were third last out, and uh, you still had some pressure because you knew you had Fast Man Sato to come and then obviously Gunner. But uh, you also had Rusty. Rusty had a nice little pace as well. He, he, he got uh, into fourth position, so that was a good lap by uh, Rusty. Yeah, there's a couple that hit the threes and the low threes, and I, I was, um, I, I thought, oh well, here we go. But um, I just played it a little too safe on the first sector and clipped the cutting, the wall on the inside of the cutting, and I thought, oh, don't, don't panic, don't try and make it up, and just yeah, kept it steady, and yeah, come, come away with a good lap. 
Yeah, beautiful, mate. Well, go and congratulate, and I'm sure you've got one uh, very excited teammate that would love to uh, congratulate you as well. I'm sure Wade is uh, absolutely stoked to be uh, on the front row for the start of the big one tomorrow. So rest up for the uh, for the night, and uh, we look forward to seeing you and uh, Wadey. Uh, give it give it your all uh, tomorrow, and wish you all the best. Cheers, uh, mate, and uh, yeah, let's all have a good race tomorrow. All right, cheers, buddy. And next one there, we'll just take Ashley out there so he can uh, go back into the main race chat. I can uh, just get to uh, drag him out. And I'll try and bring Gunner in. And uh, let's have a little look to see. Uh, welcome, Gunner, into the uh, broadcast, mate. We just want to uh, get your thoughts on your lap there. You're, you're fairly fast in that first sector. And then over the top, it looks like you um, just got a little bit wrong coming out of the uh, forest elbow a little bit, I think it might have been. Uh, yeah, actually a bit of a mechanical issue. I had um, some steering issues. The uh, force feedback went away on me. Um, coming down Conrad Strait, I actually had to remove the wheel and put it back on to get the electronics going again. Uh, so we saw you weaving around. I thought that may have been you trying to get a little bit of that extra heat to try and go as deep as you can into the into the chase, but it was because your uh, steering wheel come loose on you, mate. So uh, I tell you what, a, a driver that can still get second on a top 10 shootout with a hardware issue. I tell you what, that's a pretty impressive gunner. So uh, well done. And you're going to be on the, sec on, the, on, the, on the front row alongside Ashley and Wadey in the Coke Commodore. I'm sure you guys, you and Longy, are going to be happy with that and uh, be able to try and get away without any incident uh, at the drop of the flag tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad it's still on the front row. Um, Longy's going to be starting the car for us, so I'm glad I've still got him a, a clear spot ahead of him so he can get the best launch that he can. And... Uh, yeah, try and put in those laps. Yeah, definitely. I think Longy deserves to give you uh, one of Tasmania's finest beers, mate, because that was still a good lap, mate. Point zero one two second off pole position, but you've been fastest all week, and I'm sure we're going to see you be very competitive uh, during race trim tomorrow as well. So rest up, and we can't wait to see you guys on track tomorrow morning. Excellent. Cheers, mate. No dramas. So let's see if we can now bring in Sato if he's still available. Yes, he is. So I'll bring Sato in. Uh, the last of the drives that um, that finished third position on the uh, grid. So let's just pick up Sato's car. And uh, Sato, how did, how did that lap go for you, mate? In the Monster um, Energy car. <laughs> Not my best lap, I'll be honest. The first sector was quite good. Um, but... um. Uh, just had a bit of understeer over the top, and then, but the big lose was at the chase where I um, I got a bunch of wheel spin. I had to come out of the throttle, get back in it, and I lost three, four tenths there. Yeah, right. But we did actually see you uh, with a really fast first sector, Sato, and we thought you were really, really on it. Uh, you had a lot of support. You actually had support from your uh, fellow teammate that you won the event last year with Lockie Five Fives. He was really he had everything crossed. I think hoping for the best, but uh, just wasn't to be. But 0.5 of a second, I think it was, off the uh, pole position roughly. And you've uh, got yourself, you and Highlander, in a very good uh, position for the race tomorrow. Yeah, well, we've got a good starting position, but you're right, it's all about tomorrow and staying out of trouble and hopefully we're in with a shot come the final session. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, as I said to everyone, go and rest up, mate. Enjoy the uh, evening and uh, get uh, prepped ready for the big one tomorrow. And um, I'm telling you what, I think there's a lot of people anticipating a great and a very fast race tomorrow. So uh, best of luck in your final preparations there and, and look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Yep. See you guys. See you later. All right. So that's about it, guys, from me. So uh, why, why don't we have a look at my own car before we end? Just a little bit of a self little pun for me and... Um, uh, Mitch Kemp, we're going to race this uh, Premier Premier Air Hire car <clears throat> tomorrow. We're going to be starting, I think it's position 11 or 12 maybe, something like that. So I think it's position 12 out of 13. So make sure you come on board tomorrow. We're going to have the race uh, coming to you live for the start of session one and definitely session three. We are just getting the final details for session two and the final session so you can get all the action live here on the Twitch channel. 
uh, may not be on ANZ CRL Twitch channel, it may be on another uh, user's uh, channel, but we'll get that all out to you. But the uh, Twitch channel will be live tomorrow from uh, 10 15. Um, around that, about 10 15, 10 20. The race is scheduled to start at 10 30 Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. So until then, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that top 10 shootout. I absolutely enjoyed uh, bringing that to you guys. And we'll catch up with you tomorrow morning. Till then, cheerio, guys.